we are going to be having a look at SIRDS as the second part of chapter one. Now, SIRDS, you hopefully have come across that in GCSE, and if you haven't come across SIRDS at GCSE, now is a chance for us to be able to recap some of these ideas um, and to see how they work, because we're going to be using them quite frequently. So a recap of what it means to be a third. It says that a third is a root of a number that does not simplify to a rational number. So I think we need to break down what that definition actually means here. So it's a root of a number, so it's obviously going to be to do with this square root here, that does not simplify to a rational number. So for example, this is not going to be a third because what is the square root of 16? It's 4, OK? This is a rational number. I'm going to explain what I mean by a rational number in just a second. I'm also going to do another example. If I had 25 over 9, what is the square root of 25 over 9? Five, 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 five over 3. So this is also a rational number, OK? This is actually an integer, and this is a rational number. An integer is a type of rational number. So let's just quickly read what it means here to be a rational number. A rational number is any which can be expressed as a over b, where a, b are integers. So for example, 2 over 3 and 4 over 1, which is 4, are rational numbers. But pi and the square root of 2 are not rational numbers. And if something is not rational, we call it irrational. irrational. Yeah, it's an irrational number. So although this doesn't look like a over b, it is actually because you could write it as 4 over 1. So this is what we mean by rational and irrational numbers. So some things that we need to know about to do with thirds, and pardon me if this is stuff that you know already, but we should see this as good recap and good revision. Some of the laws say that if you're taking the square root of A and you're multiplying it by the square root of B, that is the same thing as taking the square root of A multiplied by B. And this law obviously works in two directions. Instead of taking the square root of AB, you could split it into the square root of A times the square root of B. And we'll apply this with some numbers in a second as well. The other thing that also makes sense is if you are doing a division, then it's the same, sorry, a division with thirds, it's the same thing as taking the square root of the entire fraction. And that's actually been applied in this small example that we did up here. When we did the square root of 25 over 9, we actually did the square root of 25 and the square root of 9 to come up with 5 over 3. So just a couple of those laws that we've got there. So these things that I've got down here, I want to be able to simplify these things that I've got written, OK? A nice easy one to begin with, and you can write this into your notes as we go, is that root 3 multiplied by 2, what would that simplify to? 2 root 3, okay? We would write it as 2 root 3. Why do you think we don't write root 3, 2? It looks like you're almost doing the square root of 32, and if you were reading someone's work, it might look really messy. So we never write it like that, okay? Um, Next one that we've got here, we've got 3 root 5 multiplied by 2 root 5. Yes, Jamil? 3 times 2 root 5 root 5. Good. It's like in normal bits with algebra. You can just multiply whichever ones you want to in any order. So I think the smart way of doing it is the 3 times 2, first of all, which is a 6. And then you've got root 5 times root 5, which is 5. So you get 6 multiplied by 5, which is 30. So you've got here two irrational numbers that when you multiply them, you end up with a rational number, OK? Um, root 8. I wonder if any of you remember how to simplify things that look like this, where we've got the square root of 8, and we want to simplify what this looks like. Yes, Jamil? Square inside, so Just say that so that everyone can hear the beginning, but it's really important what you said. Find a square number that is a factor of 8, OK? So what, two, what numbers would, um, would be factors? 4 and 2. So I could rewrite this as the square root of 8 as the square root of 4 multiplied by 2. And the reason we picked 4 is because in a second, I can use this law up top, and I can rewrite that as the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 2. And the square root of 4 is just 2. So it is just. 2 root 2. Now, I've obviously done that in a slightly longer kind of way there, where I've written out this stage, I've written them pulled apart, and then I've done it simplified. You're probably going to be able to do these in your head eventually. Um, obviously, with calculators, you can put square root of 8, and it will immediately pop up as 2 root 2. 
So the reason this is useful is because it allows us to put irrational numbers together in ways that we might not have expected. So I've got root 12 plus root 27. And there's these, I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to add these together, because obviously it is not going to be equal to the square root of 39. They don't have a law that behaves in that way. Okay, that makes obviously a lot of sense if you just think of, I don't know, square root of 4 plus the square root of 9 is definitely not the square root of 13, because you've got 2 plus 3 is not the same as the square root of 13. So there's no law that adds them together like that. What do you think I can do then to try and uh, simplify this? What can I do to root 12? Someone other than Jamil, because he's not doing all the work today. What can I do to the square root of 12? How can I simplify the square root of 12? Um, Say that again. It's root 3 times root 4, and root 4 is 2. So it's 2 root 3. And what do we think root 27 is the same as? It's 3 root 3, because it's 9 times, this is the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. So we've got 2 root 3 plus 3 root 3, so we have 5 root 3. So something that seemingly is not going to simplify, simplifies something down to 5 root 3, okay? Um, what do you mean we only write down one of them? You know we have 2 root 3 plus 3 root 3? Yeah. So this is, this is like saying, if I imagine that this was, it's like 2a plus 3a, I've got 5a at the end. I've got two lots of it and then three more lots of it, so I have five lots overall. That's a very good question. And then you should know how to expand your double brackets from, uh, back from GCSE, and they're going to just behave in exactly the same way with thirds. I'm sure many of you have seen this before, but for many of you, this is going to be a good refresher. So I do them by multiplying the first one by the first and the first one by this part here. So I've got root 8 times root 2. What is root 8 times root 2? Root 16, which is 4. Not 4 root 4, just 4. Okay. So I'm, I'm actually going to write it as root 16 for now, and then we'll, we'll simplify it again. And then I've got root 8 multiplied by negative 3, which is minus 3 root 8. Then I've got positive 1 times root 2, which is just positive root 2. And then I've got the 1 multiplied by negative 3, which is negative 3. So that looks like it's finished, but of course it's not finished because there's some more simplifying that can go on here. Let's actually finish this bit. So root 16 is 4. And then we've got 3 multiplied by root 8. Now we actually know what root 8 is. It's somewhere else on the page. Root 8 is, is 2 root 2. So we've got 2 root 2 multiplied by 3. How many root 2s is that? It is 6 root 2, because we've got 3 multiplied by 2 root 2, which is 6 root 2. Then I have plus root 2 from here and the minus 3. So this is going to simplify to... So five, minus 5 root 2. There's a minus 5 root 2, because you've got minus 6 plus the 1 root 2. And what else? Minus, no, it'll be minus one plus one. no, it's 4, five. take away 3. So it is 1 minus 5 root 2. The way I think about thirds is I kind of think of them like algebra, right? If this was 4 minus 6x plus x minus 3, you would have all been able to have simplified that when you were in year 7 or in year 8, OK? Apart from this time, x is not a letter. It's actually just a third. They are like thirds, so we can add them together. as Like terms, not like thirds. They are like terms, so we can add them together like that. So I have got some questions I'd like you to have a look at from the next exercise. Um, the way I'd probably like you to approach this exercise is I'd like you to start off by just doing this column of questions, and then I'd like you to do this column of questions, and then I'd like you to do question three. Once you've finished that, you can then try these questions here, and then you can go down and do these questions here. So that you're getting a bit of variety as you go through them. If you want to check any of your answers, obviously you've got the answers in the, um, there with you as well. And if you finish those questions, you can have a think about this extension question that I've got down here. So I don't think we're going to need too much time on this. I think we'll see how we're doing in about 12 minutes.